everyone. Sorry, so sorry about the technical difficulties on the other one. So if you were over there, come here now. <laughs> yeah, I was having a little bit of trouble with the Be Live, but um, they've been great and they're pretty new, so I don't feel too bad about it. But I didn't want to keep you hanging when I had scheduled this uh, talk for anybody who had been here. So I am going to go through the agenda. This is going to be the number one mistake that people make when they're making their book covers um, for for putting on Amazon or wherever. Okay, so first I'm going to start with a little story. Um, I was helping a gentleman. I was evaluating his book cover because he'd already had the book cover made, and um, and the book cover that he had, he had hired and gotten a custom graphic artist to do some artwork and that cost him two hundred dollars and then he had hired somebody to um, arrange the book cover you know with font special font and everything and that cost him a hundred and fifty dollars and so he put a lot of good money into this book cover and it did look really nice but he made the number one mistake that people make when doing their book covers and um, so what is that number one mistake? The number one mistake is um, that his book was sci-fi, right? The book was a sci-fi book and the, the artist that he had was a graphic artist, like comic book style. And um, so what he forgot was that the book cover is a marketing tool. And this is the same mistake that so many people make. So many people, so many art, um, authors make this mistake of forgetting that the book cover is a marketing tool first. And I would say only. So what would happen with this guy who spent $350 getting this beautiful cover for his sci-fi story? Well, science fiction people aren't even going to pick it up. Like people who read sci-fi books aren't going to pick up a book that looks like a graphic novel. And or maybe that you know maybe there's there's some crossover. There might be some sci-fi and graphic novel reading per people, but when they're picking up the book looking for sci looking for a graphic novel and the people who are looking for a graphic novel are going to pick it up thinking it's a graphic novel cuz it's got this graphic art on the cover they're going to think it's a graphic novel, they're going to open it up and be disappointed because it's sci-fi and somebody who's in the mood for sci-fi is not even going to pick up the book even though it is a sci-fi book. So, um, so it's important to remember that the book cover is a marketing tool and that the number one thing that you can do is make sure that your cover matches your genre. Like make sure that you're that people can tell what genre your book is just from looking at the cover, because that's because um, the the most important thing about your book is the story. You want people to pick it up and open it and read it, and so don't forget when you are making your book cover or when you are hiring somebody to make your book cover to remember to make sure that it matches the genre. And I have some more tips and tricks about how to do that, which we will do in another video. But I just want to do put that out there because it is the number one mistake people make, and it's a big one. And it'll cost you readers, and it'll cost the readers. <laughs> it'll cost you because you won't get the readers that you want, and it and it, and you're depriving the readers of your story. So there's people out there that want to read your awesome story, and they might not be getting it because your book cover doesn't match um, the genre. So that is my number one mistake that people make with book covers. I can hang out here if anybody has any questions. I'm happy to a answer any questions and I'm also going to be here every Sunday afternoon for a little bit. Um, I'll start hopefully next time I won't have any technical difficulties. Let's see. I have a question. Have you seen people who use the wrong covers simply because they put a lot of money into them? Um, you know what, I, I do think, you know, once you've spent some good money on something, there is an attachment to it. You don't want to admit 
that it was the wrong cover because you spent so much money on it. You don't want to give it up. But I think that does happen. Um, unfortunately, this one guy I'm telling you about, he he had already had the book cover, the books physically printed. Like he came in with a whole box of books, <laughs> all with this cover on it. And I just, oh, it was a little bit heartbreaking because because I it was. I don't know, because he had all these books with the wrong book cover on it. <laughs> yeah, so yes, I have I have seen that. Also, I know, right? <laughs> also, a lot of people, because um, not only had spent the money on the book covers themselves just for the design, he'd spent the money on all the books. Okay, also a lot of people, when they do it yourself, when they make their own book cover, sometimes they have a really strong attachment. Like I knew a lady who had taken some photographs of her friends to be the characters in the book and um and so she put the, her friends on the book cover and so of course of course there's this attachment to this cover that she made um because it had her friends on it <laughs> but it didn't end up re it wasn't really necessarily a good match for the genre uh and so you know it's just I, it can be really hard to let to let go of what you're attached to but I think if you can keep your priority of having a lot of people read your book like the story the story is more important than the book cover than the summary than you know the artwork the like the story is what you've put so much time and effort into and so the story is what you want to get out there and the book cover is just like is just dressing it's just <laughs> It's just like, you know, the makeup <laughs> or it's, it's not the meat. It's just, you know, I don't know. It's not that important except for to get people to open the book and read your story because that's what's the most important part. Yep. So if there's any other questions, oh, like I was saying, um, I'm going to be here on Sunday afternoons and then, um, and then I will also be here on Tuesday mornings with Megan. <laughs> Megan and I will be chatting about um, other writing and tip, tippy things. Let's see. She says, about how long do you think the book cover design deserves? And I'm not sure what you mean with that question. Um, how long? I, about how long do you think the book cover design deserves? I don't know. <laughs> like how much time? Oh, okay. Um, and I don't know until you get it right. <laughs> I mean, it depends on who's making it. You know, it it depends on uh, it depends on you know your level of graphic skill or you know I can go in and make a book cover relatively quickly you know within an hour or two have a have a really good book cover but if you don't have as much design skills it's gonna take you longer but um, but we have I'm gonna have some more tips about designing book covers on these Saturday or on these Sunday afternoon Facebook lives so okay Tony I was completely taken with a stupid pink suitcase and I had the good sense to take the advice of the artist layout. In this case, she was right, and I have the pink suitcase. <laughs> I would love to see that book cover, Tony. I would love to see your book cover. If you want to put, uh, if you want to put a link in the comments, then we can all see the book cover of your stupid pink suitcase. That's awesome. Yeah, these are for like this is I'm doing do it yourself. But if you if you were hiring a graphic artist, that's the if you're hiring the artist an artist or somebody to do it for you again. Good thing to remember. Make sure that the cover matches the genre and even some of these other Sunday afternoon tips. We will be talking about other things that you can do use for do it yourself or to take to the people that you're hiring. So it's good information in any case. Yep. So I'm just here on a Sunday afternoon, on no makeup, just hanging out, and I'm going to be here every Sunday afternoon, at, unless otherwise notified, and 
Um, Megan and I will be there on Tuesday mornings, and we'll, we're here to help you. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments now, and I will um, answer them, hopefully, maybe on one of these next Sunday afternoon tipsters, tip, tippy times, mindset and marketing with Ella. Yeah, because I'm doing marketing in the mindset. So thank you, everybody, and good luck with your book covers, and good luck with your books, and hugs, and writing, <laughs> writing mojo flowing to you through the ether. Bye.